Hello, my name is Dennis Curran. I'm a uh, you know, volunteer pre organizer for conservative precinct delegates in the Republican Party in the Wayne 11th area for, I don't know, 70, 70 years now. Um, I'm Mr. Bob. I'm Bob Maroney. I'm a trustee of the Republican Service of Colonia, and I've been doing parliamentary items off and on with small groups for the last 50 years or so. Um, what we have here is a, um, we're going to show you a little uh, segment of video. The reason why is because a lot of the new precinct delegates have never seen a contested Republican convention. Um, the last convention was pretty much a walkthrough. It was, everything was handed to us on a silver platter and it was all a uh, charm, charm offensive from the people who were running it. So what you, we'd like you to see is what it's really like when there is something serious on the table, like for instance, as in four years ago, the leadership of the Republican Party. Um, could we turn down the tape, please? If you're rising as a point of order, tell me what rule has been violated. And there will be plenty of discussion about the rules as after the report has been given. Out of order. Out of order. You will have an opportunity to speak at the right time. Let her speak. Let her speak. And I, I have already clarified that the set of rules that we are going to be discussing is the set that at the top it says a proposed set of rules to govern tonight's election. We are not discussing, I don't know anything about that document, it was not, it is not in this discussion of what we're doing, it was not something that's being reported out by our committee. Mr. Tino, I challenge the chair. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Permanent Organization report. We have a challenge. The nominating committee. There is plenty of time for you to do this. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Permanent Organization report. The I clarified your question by telling you which document we were discussing. Now, if you will please allow the chair Call for a vote. to give his report, There's nothing to then, then we will move forward and you will have an opportunity to ask questions about that particular report. If you are out of order, okay? No, you've been challenged. You have been challenged. There's nothing to challenge up left. Please allow the chair the challenge. Okay, well then I challenge you. There is no challenge. This is on tape and it'll be challenged. To address your there is no challenge. This is not challenge. We have to have parliamentary rules of procedure that follow this debate. We cannot out shout. The chair. There are rules. Okay. We have sergeant at arms in the meeting for a reason. And they will do their job if they have to. Okay. Now that was uh, what do you what do you think of that little three minutes there? That was really sad. Uh, really sad to see because they're supposed to be a deliberative body. And I believe the Republican Party of the state, and you're more well versed than I, is supposed to follow Robert Fields' order. I have a little version of it here. And when you follow Robert Fields' order, the chair has one duty. Uh, right here, the chair has the duty of making sure the rules are followed. And that's the number one job of the chair. In this case, there were multiple violations. The first one was he just ran roughshod over the people. The people have the right to bring up a point of order whenever there's a precedence issue. And that was done correctly. Point of order was raised. Any one person can interrupt. The fact the chair was bothered by it or emotionally upset about it is irrelevant. He can't simply rule it out of order. He can say the chair rules the point of order is not well taken. That's the polite way to do it. And once the chair has said that, then, oh, okay, well, it's done. No, it's not. Then you appeal, and you're allowed to politely appeal say, I appeal from the chair. That was the, the, the most egregious act I saw the chair perform was when he walked over and said, start reading something to somebody else. That was horrible. Because at that point, he lost complete control of the meeting. And that's the whole purpose of having Robert's Rules of Order. You have to have the chair. If, if 
enforce the rules and on himself as well. That was really unfortunate, but the appeal then should have had the immediate vote, or the challenge issue, if you will, should have had the immediate vote. It needs a second, then it has a vote, and it either passes or it doesn't pass. But you have to be very clear as to what you're appealing from the chair. So was this convention run under rapid rules? Absolutely not. This would have been gotten a zero at any freshman course in parliamentary procedure. Thanks, Bob.